So believe it or not, it's actually getting pretty close to the one year mark since AMD and Nvidia launched their new series of GPUs. And although a lot of you haven't been able to actually purchase one in the first place, availability is starting to improve quite a bit. That does also mean that pricing will improve and start to drop as these cards just sit on the shelf a little bit longer and retailers have to compete against each other for the first time in a very long time. But I think now is like a really good time to take a step back, take a look at all of the options out there because there are quite a lot of them and kind of just evaluate which ones are good and which ones are not so good. But I think the most important thing before we even get to any of the info here is that if you already have a gaming PC or just a PC nonetheless that runs games good enough for you to kind of hold out for the next six months or so, then definitely do that because now is still a pretty bad time to be upgrading your gaming GPU. On the other hand, if you do not have a PC that does what you need it to do, then keep watching. Let's start at the budget end of the spectrum first. And unfortunately, there's nothing here but pain and bad news. The days of budget killer 200 or even $300 GPUs are long gone, and it's highly unlikely that they'll be returning anytime soon. For as long as AMD and Nvidia can keep selling 3080s and 6800 XTs at ridiculous volumes, that's the way it's going to stay for probably a long time. I mean, even if you consider something like a GTX 1660 Super or an RX 5600 XT, those two are currently going for ridiculous prices. One solid option here though is to look at pre-built gaming systems. The price markups there are nowhere near as insane, and that's probably your best bet in securing an affordable graphics card in the context of an entire PC build. I would also recommend skipping AMD's new Ryzen 5000 APUs like the 5600G and 5700G. Despite what you might think you can run on these chips, make no mistake, you'll be left a little bit underwhelmed if you're trying to play modern titles at 1080p. These chips still run on Vega graphics, and that does leave a lot to be desired in 2021. I mean, if you're only trying to run Minecraft and CSGO, then it'll be fine, but that's really kind of the limit. And lastly, speaking about affordability, maybe don't entirely discount the idea of a new generation console. You have a much better chance of getting those close to MSRP compared to an RTX 3070, especially the Xbox Series S, which you can find at $300 US pretty much anywhere. It is actually a really solid 1080p 60fps gaming machine. Some titles of course can go beyond that with either support for a 120fps mode or a higher res 1440p mode, but for $300 in a super tough PC hardware market, it's at least something to consider for those budget gamers. But now finally, let's get to some actual GPU recommendations, starting with the cheapest new generation GPUs that you can buy today. So we have the RX 6600 XT and also the Nvidia RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. Now, if we go off MSRP, the 6600 XT from AMD just does not make sense at all. I mean, the performance is a fair chunk behind the similarly priced 3060 Ti and falls a lot closer to the 3060. So in this comparison, the 3060 Ti would be the easy pick here, except when you take a look at what these GPUs actually sell for today, the story changes big time. This price chart shows the realistic prices that you'd expect to pay for a current gen GPU in the US market right now, but it gets really interesting when we also plot the MSRP for these GPUs and visualize just how much more expensive each product is over its supposed launch MSRP. So whereas the 3060 and 3060 Ti are both selling a good chunk above their launch asking price, the 6600 XT is pretty much spot on where AMD said it would be. In fact, there's an even stronger case for the 6600 XT when we take a look at the European market and the Australian market, where the AMD card is a few hundred dollars cheaper than the Nvidia cards that it's supposed to compete against. I'll also mention that these price values are the average of the lowest price two to three in stock listings. So in terms of performance, the 6600 XT is kind of like being able to buy a 5700 XT again in 2021, but for for about $100 more. And considering that the 5700 XT absolutely stomped when it came to overall value, today at least, the 6600 XT is one of the best deals that you can currently get. I know it feels like a giant step back compared to what the GPU market used to be, and it is, but again, if you're really desperate to build a gaming PC, you don't really have anything else even close at this price point. Now let's talk about the GPUs in the middle, which are not exactly mid-range because they are quite expensive, but for what it's worth, we're talking about the RTX 30 and 3070 Ti, and the 6700 XT and 6800 from AMD. Pretty much everywhere you look, availability and pricing is worse on the AMD Radeon cards, especially in the US and European market where the current selling price
price over MSRP is pretty massive. However, the recommendation here changes drastically depending on where you live. In Australia, for example, a 6700 XT will set you back 1129 AUD. Again, these are for the lowest couple of in-stock items. And given that performance here is pretty much right on par with the RTX 3070, spending an extra $400 there just would not be worth it. That story flips though when we take a look at the US market, where the 3070 is actually decently cheaper. Although I will say that for Micro Center, I'm unable to get the accurate in-stock listings since GPUs are for in-store purchases only. The European market is consistent with this though, and in this case, I'd actually recommend grabbing a 3070 Ti. There you get a small bump in CUDA cores and a memory speed upgrade as well for about 50 euros, and I would say that's definitely worth it over the 3070 and the other two AMD cards. Also remember, and I personally think this is quite important, it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison between current AMD and Nvidia GPUs, and no matter which way you look at it, you can do more with an Nvidia card. With Nvidia, you can easily stream with the onboard NVENC encoder, you have support for CUDA and optics in selected production apps, and Nvidia's Shadow Clay game recording is typically a lot more reliable compared to AMD's Relive, which sometimes just does not work at all. You also have better support and performance when it comes to ray tracing and AI upscaling technology if those are things that interest you anyway. These are things that AMD are working on, but game support is minuscule in comparison to Nvidia, but it is pretty early days for them and it will improve in the future. But now let's talk about the high-end stuff, starting with the 6800 XT and the 3080. Gaming performance here is close enough that it's really going to come down to the pricing in your region, which surprisingly actually puts the 3080 cheaper in the US and European market, with the two about the same here in Australia. Again, this is assuming that you need a high-end GPU right now. Maybe you've been saving up for the past year and you're just really sick of what you're currently using. Whatever the case, the 3080 looks like the better pick. Now as for the 6900 XT and the 3080 Ti, the only way that these two cards make sense would be if the pricing was just slightly above the 3080 and 6800 XT, seeing as that's what you're getting in terms of performance. As we can see though, expect to pay a few hundred dollars more for just a few extra FPS. Really the only region where a 3080 Ti could make sense over a 3080 would be here in Australia, but even that's a stretch. To recap my review of the 3080 Ti, it's about 7% faster on average over the 3080 at 1440p and maybe closer to 10% when we're looking at 4k. So pricing ideally shouldn't be more than 10% above what you can get a 3080 for. And finally, there's one more GPU left on this chart and that's the RTX 3090. And the only reason that this card would make sense for you is due to the massive 24 gigabytes of VRAM that you'd need to speed up your particular workflow. I am aware that the 3090 lacks the production drivers for programs like SolidWorks, but for creating Creative workflows, that huge video memory ceiling can still be really useful. Otherwise, you'd have to be loaded to buy this thing just for gaming or do gaming for a job, considering the marginal performance gains over a 3080 Ti and even 3080. And there's no doubt that pricing and availability will continue to fluctuate up and down, especially towards the end of the year. Uh, but at least for now, I really hope that this video has kind of been helpful to you who have been considering a GPU upgrade for a while and are kind of just ready to pull the trigger on something. Again, if you do have a gaming machine that runs games good enough, then I would recommend holding out still, probably until the start of next year, just to see how things pan out. Otherwise, you risk just wasting a bunch of money. Otherwise, I really hope this helped you out. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.